Thank you very much, Professor Hirtzak. Next speaker is Bartosz Kramek from the Open Dialogue Foundation. Um, I recommend you to look at the website if you haven't. It's very lively, um, and I'm looking forward to this talk. First of all, I would like to uh, thank you for the invitation and privilege to be here and uh, to present a few remarks with regard to the current situation of Ukraine, which is, uh, I think, one of the most important issues nowadays. I'm especially honored, as I'm not an academic uh, expert with broad and long-term expertise and theoretical knowledge in this, this matter, I would like to, to share a few personal observations based on my personal experience as well as, as uh, the experience of my organization gained since the, since the very beginning of the Euromaidan in Kyiv at the end of uh, 2013, um, later called the Revolution of Dignity or simply Maidan. Please be aware that my point of uh, view is rather a voice of uh, the young generation of Polish people Perhaps some personal circumstances may, may matter as well. My wife is a Ukrainian, born in Sevastopol, actively involved in the political developments in Ukraine as a social activist over the last 15 years, far longer, far longer than me. Before the war, greater part of, of my family lived on the territory of today's Ukraine, and some of them were murdered during the massacres in 1943. On the other hand, some of them were saved by the Ukrainian neighbors. Now, let me proceed to, to the core issue of my speech. Thanks to different contacts, different uh, social media channels and uh, different friends in Ukraine, we observed the developments in Kiev on the Maidan since the early days of the revolution. Shortly after the beginning, uh, we realized there, is, uh, there was a need to, to go there in order to, to get more information, to gather more information, and then make uh, a decision how to, as how to proceed. My wife, the initiator of, uh, of this mission, said when there is a Maidan, there is also a need to, to be there. But in addition to sending a mission to, to Kiev, we also took part in Warsaw's uh, first uh, Euromaidan, the first public uh, gathering in front of the Ukrainian embassy, organized in order to show our solidarity with uh, the protesters and the association agreement. There was still hope that it would be, it would be signed. Then, having uh, convinced some members of uh, Polish parliament to, to go with us, uh, along with them, we went to, to Kyiv, and uh, finally, we, we have sent more than 60 volunteers, apart from politicians and uh, experts uh, there. Some of us uh, generally remembered uh, the impressions uh, from the previous, let's say, revolution of 2004. The memories of the Orange Revolution were very vivid and uh, vital for us. And that's why this was, of course, our first and obvious association another revolution. We have experienced, of, uh, or we are still experiencing even, even now, of course having in mind that uh, Ukrainians uh, are now exhausted and frustrated uh, due to the current long-lasting crisis, uh, but we experienced an extremely friendly attitude of uh, Ukrainians. We, we were not able to, to cross the street uh, without being stopped at uh, every corner by grateful inhabitants of, uh, of Kyiv, uh, but also by newcomers from the whole country. It was uh, gratitude we, which we did not expect. While speaking with us, uh, they were looking for things which uh, connect us, Ukrainians and Poles. They were telling us, but also reminding themselves about their Polish ancestors, their visits to Poland, former work or studies in our country, their own experiences as uh, well as that of their families. They were trying to speak Polish, even if they only knew a few words. Shortly speaking, I have never been greeted anywhere in the world and on a such massive scale as in Kiev in the first days of, of the Maidan. 
this was uh, a wonderful experience for two reasons. Maidan itself, the spirit of the revolution, people's unity, etc. And uh, on the other hand, the Ukrainian attitude, uh, ordinary people's uh, attitude uh, towards uh, some strangers uh, from, from Poland. But that was not all. The attitude towards uh, Poland is also worth uh, mentioning, I think, because it quickly, it quickly became apparent that Ukrainians perceive us as a role model, a guiding light for themselves. They perceive contemporary Poland as a success story. Many times I've, uh, I've heard that Ukrainians wish that Ukraine were even half as good as Poland in terms of uh, well-being, in terms of uh, being a friendly place to, to live, which was something a little strange. As everyone knows, we are a nation of complainers. While we loved to complain about uh, Polish roads, we surprisingly realized that the very Polish roads are a symbol of excellence uh, for Ukrainians. So the first summary is as follows. Their gratitude for our solidarity, for just being there with them, with Polish flags, was an exceptional experience. The special feeling grew over time, enhanced by their aforementioned perception of our country. And that created in us a sense of obligation to be more seriously involved, to become truly helpful for to those people demanding fair and European future. We felt we, we should do more. What we've, uh, what we've done and what we, what we are doing is, uh, of course, another story. But let's focus on uh, this sensation for a while. We have personally discovered that there is something we, we can do. There are some achievements in our transformation, Polish transformation, we could and we should uh, export. They want to be like us, they share some common European values, and they believed that Europe and the world would be with them. Now the Polish side. During Ma the Maidan, Polish society showed, uh, from our experience, extraordinary generosity. However, frequently inspired and uh, mobilized by a very active Ukrainian diaspora in our country. Many people simply cared. There were two dimensions of their involvement. Moral support, which usually resulted in people's uh, participation in various forms of public gatherings, pro-Ukrainian manifestations, and on the other hand, more practical, material support. Not only our organization, but um, also many other organizations carried out uh, fundraising events uh, and activities, organized public collection, of medicines and other necessary equipment, like body armors for the Maidan Samoobrona and later for Ukrainian soldiers. Hundreds of people were willing to go to Ukraine in order to, to help as volunteers. And so it's a society. Now the media, huge media interest. Many correspondents sent to Ukraine in order to observe the revolution and the war. Since the beginning, Ukraine has become one of the main topics for the Polish media. It still continues. As far as we know, some of the media outlets keep the Ukraine-related topics despite a relatively low and decreasing interest from the broader public. At the same time, the government policy was rather careful. Although many MPs and uh, Polish members of the European Parliament, uh, Polish members of the European Parliament, what's interesting, rising above uh, usual political divisions were actively supporting Ukrainian civil society and later the Ukrainian state in its struggle with Russia. This unity could be a chance to create a new strategic objective of Poland's policy, to share our experience, to promote democracy and the rule of law, to support the European aspiration of our eastern neighbors in order to broaden and strengthen the area of free democratic countries situated between our borders and Russia. It has two faces of the coin. It is idealistically right and pragmatically useful as it helps to improve our security, political influence and importance on international level, as well as to create new economic links, new opportunities for growth. There are no other ambitious ideas and long-term goals 
after Poland's accession to NATO and the European Union. But I am afraid that the Polish state is not very willing or ready for such big initiatives. Many times it prefers to remain relatively passive and to rely on the decision of uh, other international players or even limit itself to, to a mere reaction to the latest uh, developments. Ukraine and Ukrainians showed us that there are dreams and values really worth fighting for. I remember the sharp contrast when I um, returned from Kiev in Jan January 2013 and shortly after um, coming to London. Uh, I saw the people on the frozen streets uh, beaten by the police under the EU flags oppressed by the authorities, while at the same time, the United Kingdom Independence Party was gaining its popularity as it was calling for withdrawal from, uh, from the EU. The Western world and the especially the EU countries usually prefer keeping their status quo as they are afraid to lose their prosperity and well-being. And uh, this is, I think, the, the bright side of my story. This is what, what was uh, what was good or which could be, which might be something useful for the future. Uh, but, but what do we have on, on the other side? Generally misused and this, uh, distorted history, internet trolls, haters and propaganda. Um, provocations, of course, as a tool of uh, Russia's policy. Unfortunately, our common history has become one of the main tools used by the Russian propaganda. From my point of view, Ukrainians generally have no problems with history at all. Of course, it's a huge mental shortcut, and I, I do not mean Ukrainians' uh, problems with their self-identity, controversial heroes, etc. Mm, I mean, it's not an important issue when they meet and talk with people from, from Poland. Moreover, while in Ukraine, a few times we were surprised by the people who missed the idea of the Commonwealth of Free Nations. It is uh, very nice for a Paul to, to hear that, although we rather do not propose it as we fear potential accusation of uh, Polish neocolonialism or something like that. But when it comes to Polish people, one of the most typical associations with Ukraine was, uh, is to some extent, the Volunian massacre in 1943. I know such uh, stories quite well, as I heard them sometimes uh, even at home. The stories about Ukrainian natural-born murderers, killing innocent children, women, women and old men. Well, it's especially crucial for some people um, from the old generation. Extreme right or left-wing parties uh, nowadays, uh, organizations, uh, as well as uh, people for some reason aligned with the current policy of Russia. And of course, Russia is most interested in using it in order to provoke tensions between our nations. It does not mean that history does not matter. It matters, and we all should pay tribute to, to the victims, but pragmatically, I think those victims uh, should not be our um, hostages. They should not be hostages of, uh, of the current uh, um, politics. It's history from many, many years. Contemporary Ukrainians usually do not know anything or they know very little about those tragic developments. It's about education. Therefore, we cannot blame, blame them for their interpretation, even if we do not agree with them. Besides that, Ukrainian history was even more tragic and ambiguous than ours. Besides, a war is being waged now. We share a common threat and potentially a common enemy. Nowadays, Ukraine Oppose it, opposes it directly. Stepan Bandera, now quite well known in Poland as the main symbol of bloodthirsty Ukrainian nationalists, is dead. And I think he's rather unlikely to be resurrected while Putin is alive and dangerous. Today's Ukraine fights for Europe, or even not for Europe, but in place of Europe, as one soldier from the ATO zone, anti-terrorist operation um, zone, said to us some time ago. The same Europe, the same West, which is perceived by Putin as the main ideological and geopolitical antagonist. We know this role very well from our own 
national history, national myths. Antemurale Christianitatis, a label used for Rzeczpospolita, the Commonwealth, defending the frontiers of uh, Christian Europe and Western civilization for centuries. The very existence of Ukraine gives us the comfort of passing this function to another country. This is the reality. And this is another reason why we should do everything in our power to support Ukraine as much as it's only possible. Another and probably more serious danger in propaganda is frustration and exhaustion of ordinary people in, in Poland. Two opposite slogans. We have our own problems and hungry children versus for our freedom and yours. Many people simply do not care. They do not pay attention. They are tired. They have their own problems. And they hate politicians blaming them for ignoring their own problems for the sake of another country. Probably this was the reason why um, the vast majority of candidates, uh, except two major figures uh, from the two largest parties, uh, that they were also influenced to, to some extent, during the recent presidential campaign, um, were, let's put it diplomatically, quite assertive to quite assertive with regard to Ukrainian needs and requests, although some of them openly brought up some anti-Ukrainian issues. Indifference may become a problem as the long-lasting Ukrainian crisis is far from over. Immigration, a wave of refugees fleeing from the war and economic crisis is of vital importance, a challenge which should be a wisely uh, a wisely used chance for the development, economically, demographically, etc. But it seems, unfortunately, that our government has no real immigration policy. There is also a social factor. Some would say they, they steal our jobs. And the opinion I, I've, I've heard more frequently, they wanted a revolution, fine, but uh, let them face their consequences. They love their country and they want our help, so why do they flee Ukraine, hiding from mobilization instead of defending their country? We need to learn how to deal with immigrants effectively. The last thing to mention is the existence of, uh, of the issue we are talking about itself. Many old things have been restored. Many new have been created. There are thousands of articles, dozens of new books, published about Maidan, the current war, and everyday life in Ukraine, its culture, corruption, oligarchs, etc. There are also new valuable initiatives in the field of common research studies, undertaken, for example, by both Polish and Ukrainian institutes of national remembrance. We need to learn how to benefit from, um, from them, from those initiatives, to the greatest uh, possible extent. There is no reason for Poland to, to be aligned with uh, contemporary Ukraine in all possible areas of cooperation, not to be aligned with uh, contemporary Ukraine um, as much as we are with Germany. Ukraine's current situation gives us an extra extraordinary chance to render assistance to our neighbor while its house is on fire. A friend in need is a friend indeed. The old proverb says, what, what we do today will be our capital and contribution for the sake of common future. Thank you for your attention.